Hello, thank you for watching our talk, Rediscovering the Physical Body Online, Strategies and Challenges to Approach Non-Cisgender Identity in Social Virtual Reality. My name is Guo Freeman. I am presenting this paper on behalf of my students, Divine Maloney, Dan Asana, and Catherine Bawalar. The more contemporary understanding of gender continues to highlight how gender is a complex and profound concept regarding one's identity beyond a binary dichotomy assigned at birth. In particular, we understand non-cisgender as the umbrella term to describe diverse gender identities that do not match people's sex assigned at birth including transgender, gender fluent, and non-binary. Prior research has shown that non-cisgender technology users are often considered marginalized, despite various efforts to support these users' online experiences. A growing concern is that many technologies and platforms still seem not to be inclusive enough to serve this user's needs for appropriately presenting expressing and experiencing their diverse gender identities. As digital social spaces continue to evolve, it is also important to continue our in-depth investigations of nuanced gender presentation and expression online and how emerging new technologies may support or hinder such experiences. Therefore, in this paper, we explore non-cisgender users' identity practices and their challenges in social virtual reality. We focus on the social VR context because it offers novel and unique techniques to present and express one's identity in ways that traditional online social spaces, such as social networking sites and online gaming, cannot provide. So what is social VR? Social VR refers to 3D virtual spaces where multiple users can interact with one another through VR head-mounted displays. In social VR, people can create, craft, and customize full-body tracked avatars to interact with others. That means one's avatar body actions would correspond to their physical body actions in the real time. Using such avatars, social VR users can conduct and enjoy real-life social activities in a highly realistic simulated 3D virtual environment. However, despite identity becoming a growing research agenda in the social VR scholarship, still little is known regarding non-cisgender users' unique experiences of understanding and presenting their identities in this emerging novel social spaces. Therefore, this research gap motivates us to investigate the following two research questions. What strategies do non-cisgender users use to build and experience their diverse gender identities in social VR? And what challenges do non-cisgender users often face in their identity practices in social VR? We conducted 15 semi-structured in-depth interviews with non-cisgender social VR users. Regarding our findings, our participants highlight three main strategies they often use to build and experience their non-cisgender identity in social VR. The first strategy is to experiment embodied avatars in different ways such as wearing various avatars to build an understanding of non-cisgender identity, customizing avatars to further develop non-cisgender identity through accessories and clothing, and embodying full-body tracked avatars to experience non-cisgender identity in a realistic way. Our participants also leverage voice chat, a predominant way to communicate in social VR, to train and validate their gender-appropriate voices. This is an important exercise for them as they are able to practice presenting themselves with a modified voice that matches their non-cisgender identity, as P2 said here. 
At last, our participants consider community engagement with other non cisgender users and supporters in an immersive manner a key strategy to collectively present and experience their non cisgender identity online. They highlight two important aspects of such community engagement. Exchanging community based social support for marginalized identity and participating in non cisgender focused immersive virtual events. However, our participants also express concerns about emerging challenges and tensions for their identity practices. One challenge is a physicalized anti non cisgender rhetoric in cis-normative public spaces. And the second challenge is the common behaviors of misgendering. To discuss the implications of this work, we want to highlight the role of rediscovering the physical body in presenting and experiencing non-cisgender users' diverse gender identities online. In conventional online social spaces, the physical body is often absent. That means one's virtual identity or body is a symbolic representation or a signifier of the physical body. In contrast, in social VR, gendered experiences are not mediated by one's virtual body or physical body, but directly through their physical body. As a result, this new physical body and virtual body dynamic seems to go beyond just a VR feature, but becomes an empowerment for non cisgender users to explore more equal gender presentation online. However, we also want to provide a more critical view as the physical body can serve as a double edged sword and make non cisgender individuals subject to unwanted tensions and challenges in their identity practices, especially in public online social spaces. These insights also point to the urgent need to design the future online social spaces to better support diverse gender identities. Some design implications may include the importance of reconsidering avatar design in future metaverse to better serve users with diverse gender identities, the urgent need to reevaluate the boundary between the online and offline worlds regarding identity presentation, and the necessity to establish and educate new social norms and expectations emerging from the affordance of diverse gender identities in the future metaverse. Thank you for listening. We want to thank our participants and the National Science Foundation for supporting this research.